Hello everybody, welcome back to Control Chaos, and welcome back to uh, what I like to call a Puzzle of the Week recap. Now, this isn't a puzzle, um, but what I wanted to do was explain the previous puzzles that I've made, because I know, like, I know in the first one I would say, like, after each puzzle I would explain uh, how, to, how to solve the other ones, but obviously I didn't. Uh, I think only in two two or three of the videos I actually explain what to do once you solved it. So I thought this would be a good way for people just getting in, uh, figuring out what kind of puzzles is going on. Uh, it would be a good refresher of, can I even solve my own puzzles once I finished? Just to be clear, I'm not going to say the answers for some of them. I'm just going to explain how you can get the answer to them if you care enough to go back and do it, or you just want to go like, oh, that's how you do it, and then move on. So to start off, we're going to start off with puzzle number one. This was a super easy one, where it was just a pure proof of concept, where basically it was just base 64. You run it through a base 64 converter, you get a Discord link to my Discord, and uh, a YouTube video talking about like stuff I wanted to do in the future. Um, and one like on, uh, for people who solved it when it first came out, they got a special role in my Discord called, uh, I think, OG members or something. Um, so if you see that roll on anybody, that's why. The second puzzle was a Visionaire Cypher, I think that's how you pronounce it, I just looked it up. Um, where basically, after it said puzzle, it said in the description, uh, welcome to the second puzzle of the week, have fun solving it. Um, and that was supposed to be your passphrase to shift, um, the, uh, cypher text under it. Um, and basically what a Visionaire Cypher does is it's similar to a Caesar Cypher where uh, all the letters are shifted by a certain number. However, it's harder because it's encrypted by a uh, passphrase where basically the first letter of the text that you want to encode shifted by how much the number is of the passphrase. So let's say W is 23. So that means that you shift over the H in HTTPS by 23, and that's what makes it harder to decode because you need that specific passphrase in order to get it, and the same ciphertext can be decoded differently depending on what the passphrase was. This next one is kind of stupid. So the third puzzle of the week actually entails me blinking Morse code at you. So where it just says the puzzle is just a tiny URL because you're expected to watch the video and I'm literally blinking Morse code and that's going to be the uh, link in order to send you to the uh, YouTube link. For puzzle of the week number four, uh, once you skip to the timestamp, it was an image um, of just circles and lines. However, this is actually a clock. Uh, they're supposed to represent times on clock. And if you line up the, uh, like, the things to uh, a clock, for example, the first number would be a 1 and a 9, the next one would be a 2 and a, uh, a 0, because it's just a circle. So you got 19, 20, and then after decoding it, you get the answer. So this next one is a lot harder, and I will have to explain how to do some things, but uh, I, I made this harder on purpose where basically I should have, I, I, uh, when my Discord was solving this, I know I should have added a hint, um, where, um, like maybe a hint in the puzzle where it's like to lead you in the right direction, because basically what it is, it's coordinates, uh, Caesar, like, um, A1, Z26, where basically, like, whatever num whatever number, on the alphabet a letter is, that's what number it's converted to. A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, yada yada. So the S and the W remain uh, as letters because they're capitalized. However, the W, V, Q, dot, I, and the D, H, D, C, L, B are all translated into numbers, and from there you get a location. The location is Parana <laughs> Panema. I'm sorry if I said that wrong, I'm very sorry, it's located in Brazil, and then once you put it into the Weebly, you get my, uh, you get a website that lead, that's called The Second Step, and you get a picture of my avatar, however, this is an image puzzle. And basically, once you mess around with the image a bit, you get the words, the path is near. Now, uh, 
in website terms, what it is, um, a path is a branch off of the main U URL. So what you have to do is you have to go to the web page and then do slash near because that is the path to get to the next web page. And all that's on the page is a bunch of art that I was doing over uh, the break that I was I was on vacation at the time, so I was just doing some art when I was bored. So that that's what was on the web page. Okay, so puzzle of the week number six was an image puzzle, uh, where once you checked, there was uh, four different colors, and when you checked the hex values for each and every single one of them, and you put it together in a hex uh, converter from hex to uh, text, or regular ASCII, um, that's how you got the tiny route link. So let's say that the first image was uh, 67, 65, uh, 74, and then once you uh, split those up into three different uh, hex numbers and convert it into ASCII, you get the word get. However, it's continued after that in order to get the tiny URL link, but that's how you get it. Okay, so for puzzle of the week number seven, this one was a little bit easy. I made it probably too obvious, but on the pages of my notes, I uh, had numbers, and those numbers were an octal. So once you converted from octal to regular ASCII, you got the uh, the string of uh, characters that you need to put into the URL shortener in order to get the video. Okay, so puzzle of the week number eight was a little bit different from everything else because now uh, we were dealing with audio. Um, it was a whole bunch of like white noise and then some noise behind that. Uh, but what you what you had to do is you could throw it into an audio editing program. What I did was I threw it into Audacity. And then what you can do is you can take out background noise. And what that does is take out all of the white noise that I put into the background and then open up Spectrogram. And then looking at the Spectrogram, you can read uh, a whole bunch of words and then that's what you'd put in to the tiny URL in order to get the video. So for puzzle of the week number nine, uh, you were led to an imager page which uh, had a whole bunch of like little, little symbols, but this was uploaded on uh, May the 4th Be With You or May 4th. Um, so it is a Star Wars language called Arabesh. Um, and then once you convert it into English and then shift it uh, by a certain number in a Caesar cipher, uh, you will get the answer. This one is also a bit of a harder one because every five puzzles or so I make it like every five puzzles, uh, so five, 10, 15, um, are a lot harder than some of the others. So basically, uh, what it says is, I love that show with Finn Wolfhard and Millie Bobby Brown. It, that's Stranger Things, however, it's referencing a location from Stranger Things called the Upside Down, which is what you need to do to this. You need to flip it upside down, and then that binary is going backwards, basically, because you flipped it upside down. Um, so once you type out the binary, you get a Weebly link, link called finalsweeksucks.weebly.com. And then also once you flip over the numbers, you get the word illegible holes. So what you do is you do finalsweek.weebly.com uh, slash illegible holes, and then you get sent to a page that just says head on it, um, that says second step. So what you need to do is you need to inspect element uh, on head. It has a comment that says vig, and then a line of text, which basically means that you need to do a visionaire cipher on it using the key, fr key phrase head and what have that case sensitive and that sends you to a video. Okay, so puzzle of the week number 11 is a little bit confusing. I made this purposely hard. So you have all the colors in a row. So that's, that's the first color, second color, third color, and you do it in order. However, you need to look at the hex codes for all of them. Um, and what you may notice is that it, it's, it seems random. However, once you put it into a line and have all of the hex codes on top of each other, you'll see that only one hex number actually has an actual number. All the rest is just random letters. So what you need to do is you need to go down to where it's the hex number that represents red. You need to take all of those in order. So you have 8, 5, 12, and 16. Then next you need to take the ones for the G values. So that's four, five, three, nine, four, and five. Those are the numbers. And then next you need to take the ones from the uh, blue hex number, which is the third one, which is 19, 20, 18, 5, 1, and 13. 
And what you do is that creates three a three word phrase once you uh, A1Z26 it, and then that will put that into the tiny URL and you get your link. Okay, so puzzle of the week number uh, 12 is also hard. Uh, what I did was you have to turn on subtitles and occasionally a letter will pop up and you need to put all of those letters together, but you also need to take into account what timestamp each letter is shown. So, for example, the letter R pops up at timestamp 3, W pops up at timestamp 8, A pops up at timestamp 11, I pops up at timestamp 16, so on and so on. What you need to do is that this is a Caesar cipher, where the R is going to have to be shifted back by 3, the W is going to have to be shifted back by 8, the A is going to have to be uh, decoded by 11, and so on and so on. And then once you put all of those together, you get the phrase that you put into the tiny URL. So now on to Puzzle of the Week number 13. Uh, and what you have are these Bible verses. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, save me, O God, for the waters are coming unto my soul. A foolish son is the calamity of its father, and, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. And then there's a hint below it that says, be a good chap and find me the color name. So you're looking for a specific name of a color, more specifically an HTML color name. So when you look up the Bible verses, you get the different chapter and then the verse number and yada yada yada, but the hint is in that final line where it's be a good chap, and you're supposed to be looking at the chapter number. So the first one, um, for example, is uh, 139, the second one is another number, and the third one is another number. And then what you do is that first one is the R, the second one is the G, the second one is the B. So you look, that's the RGB values of a certain color. Then once you figure out what color that is, you take the color name, you put it into the tiny URL, and then that's how you get the video. And now for puzzle of the week 14, or puzzle 14. Now this one, I am bad at, this was on me, some stuff was messed up, but thank you to, uh, in the description I've updated it to uh, where Fury and Kapa uh, in my Discord helped me a lot in fixing this. So where basically what you have to do is that each note, you need to label each note. So if it's a G, if it's an A, you need to make sure that you label each of them and especially if they're put together. So let's say for the first one, you have an A and then a D and an E put together. What you need to do is you need to A1Z26 it. So where you get one, four and five, and then you add the four and the five together because they're on the same note. So you have one and nine, 19. You keep going down the line, doing the same exact thing for all of them. You translate it back, uh, A1, uh, A1Z26 ing it, um, and then that's how you get the phrase to put into the tiny URL. And finally, we have puzzle of the week number 15. So far, no one has solved this, not yet. But basically, what we're using is the Enigma machine. And I make some specifications where the exact model is the M, uh, the Enigma M3, and the reflector that you're using is the UKWB. However, what you need to find is the plug boards, the rotors, the positions, and the rings. So that's what you need to do in order to find what you need uh, to put in and translate the message into the uh, passphrase, or the phrase that you need to put into the tiny URL. So, your hunt starts on an imager page where you get uh, an image uh, titled uh, puzzle number 15. Your first clue is in the uh, hashtag YouTube. Uh, in imager, those are called tags, and that's because I'm tagging YouTube. That's the first hint to go into my YouTube tags, and that's where you're going to find the rotor, the rotors and the rotor numbers. After that, you're onto the image itself, uh, and what you what you see on it is an A, S, T, and a plus sign. Um, those are the things that are highlighted when you sc unscramble that. You get sat plus, which means that you need to turn the saturation on the image up. This will reveal uh, green lines linking letters together, which are the ones that you need to put on the plug board, along with a Weebly website, and what you need to do is Although it might be hard to see, I reference in the video, hey, uh, you might use the message for some other things. So it's the 
encoded message.weebly.com. Next step, once you're on the web page, you get a link, uh, you get a Google Drive link to an image along with some ciphertext. Um, on the image, if you again brighten up the saturation, uh, you get the highlighted uh, thing of OTP. Now that doesn't stand for um, one true pair or whatever the heck it stands for when, when it comes to like shipping and stuff. It stands for one time pad, which is a uh, type of cipher. So because what um, the only thing that you haven't used yet inside the puzzle is, yep, it's the Enigma machine. Watch the video for a full explanation on what standards uh, the puzzle is using in a hint. If you use uh, that on the ciphertext in a one-time pad, you get it translated. So once you put the ciphertext uh, and decode it using the pad, which is that uh, the, those two sentences, you get the positions of the rotors. Uh, there was also a hint uh, for why it's the, um, the two sentences in the description, is that if you download the uh, image, that's the file name, and that's going to reference like, oh yeah, this thing, um, like, yeah, it says, yep, it's the Enigma machine, and that's supposed to hint you in on, oh, I've seen that before, it's in the description, and using one time pad, that's how you get it. And finally, you're not done with that image yet. Once you brighten up the saturation, you see something below the surface. And if you go into the web page, it's going to say, not uh, wrong surface. So uh, you're done with the website. There's something below the surface of the image, and what you need to do is if they, you open it up in a uh, text editor such as Notepad and scroll down to the bottom, you see that there's a file hidden inside it. So if you open it in 7-zip, which is a some, something that you can use to uh, open up zip files and RAR files and different other things, but you can find stuff in, um, in different files. Like, for example, I've done this before on another puzzle where I've hidden a binary image inside another image uh, inside a zip file. So what you do is that you open the uh, image in 7-zip. You get a file that says not for the hard of hearing .jpg. However, it doesn't work. You can't open it. It's not working. The reason it says not for the hard of hearing is that it's, an ac it's actually an MP3 file. If you change the ending, if you change the file format uh, by taking away the .jpg and then adding the .mp3, you actually get a sound file that reveals the rings in order. And finally, once you put it all together, that's how you get the hidden um, decoded message that you can put into the tiny URL in order to get the answer and get to the video. So I know I was a bit uh, <laughs> cryptic with some of these puzzles and um, not exactly stating the, the exact answers because still I don't want to just spell it out. I've already explained how you can do it but I'm not going to say this is the answer or yada 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 uh, because I feel like that's like cheating and anyone can go through it if people want to take the time um, because now, now that you know the answers, you can still go back and solve them with new, like, oh, this is how you do it, and, like, still get the surprise of whatever the video is uh, for yourself. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I just wanted to do a quick recap on everything. Uh, it was kind of fun going back and going, um, shoot, how was, I, <laughs> how was I supposed to solve this again? And trying to solve my own puzzles all over again, so that was fun. Um, I might do this again, uh, maybe every 10 puzzles instead of every 15. I might do every 15, but I do want to keep doing these recaps to go like, oh yeah, this is what you're supposed to do. So yeah, it's been fun. I'm going to have to edit this all together because even though I should have had everything ready, I was having to solve puzzles on camera because I was like, uh, I forget how you do this one. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.